Hello folks, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at a project to help me solve an issue that I'm running into with my NAS. A few weeks ago, I built a six bay NAS and the case that I put it in had two fans in it, but it had no fan control. So the fan can either be off, which is ideally not a good thing, or they can be continuously on. Now for most part, I was able to spin down my six drives to reduce the noise but the two fans are still annoying and I need some way to control them or at least turn them on or off whenever needed. So we're going to look at a small project in which we'll design a fan controller for the NAS. And the specifications for this fan controller are pretty simple. The first thing that I want is I want at least three zones of temperature monitoring. This is because I have about six drives in it and I can probably combine one temperature monitor for two drives. And I would also like to have two separate fan controls or it should be able to control two separate fans. And if we get a chance we might put some PWM in the fan control so that the fans won't always run at full speed and we should be able to control its speed. And the last, which is definitely a nice to have feature, is a, some sort of a temperature al alarm wherein if the NAS goes above a certain temperature, it would have a buzzer that would just beep and it would let me know that there is something wrong with the fan control. Now, having looked at these specifications, let's get down to design and see how do we go about doing this. So now we have some more choices to make before we go about designing this circuit. The first of all, which is the easy choice, the option was either we go digital or we go analog and use op amps to design this fan controller. It's certainly doable, but when you look at the features that we wanted, especially the three zone monitoring, monitor con monitoring and the two fan control and being able to use them interchangeably, it is slightly difficult using an analog control and it would become a bit more cumbersome to calibrate the circuit. So for now, we're gonna stick with a digital design and that means that we're going to use a microcontroller and the advantage that gives us is we can easily upgrade the firmware to add more features later if we want to or especially change the parameters on which the fan would turn on or off. Having a firmware to control the fan means that now it suddenly becomes versatile because if you think about it we have three zones and two fans to control. Since it's all software we can change the way these three sensors control these two fans and we can map them any way we want in software later. The fourth and the important part is we'll have far less components in a digital design than we would have had in an analog design. And that effectively means it will be easier to design and easier to troubleshoot as well. The last but not the least point is about calibration. So inherently all of these sensor need some sort of calibration. If this was an analog design, we would have had to put in trimmer potentiometers to calibrate our temperature sensors. But now, since we are going the digital route, we can trim or calibrate our sensors in software itself. These are the basic benefits of going digital. We'll decide on what microcontroller to use once we decide on these choices. Similarly, we have a choice of what kind of temperature sensor we, we want to use. One option is we can use a plain old thermistor or we can use a specialized temperature sensing IC. The key thing to note is a thermistor is non-linear. It has inherently low precision because the precision of a thermistor really depends on 
the analog to digital converter in your micro microcontroller. That means if you are using any AVR microcontrollers and with a 10 bit a, a 10 bit ADC, you have just a 10 bit resolution on your temperature sensor now. Thermistor also gives out analog outputs and what that means is it is a varying voltage between let's say 0 to 5 volts depending on what temperature it reads. The major advantage of a thermistor though is it's extremely cheap. You get like one thermistor for about 50 cents to a dollar. The temperature sensors on the other hand which are specialized ICs are fairly linear in their operating range. They can offer precision up to, they can offer precisions up to 0.25 degrees centigrade. They sometimes have a digital output as well instead of just a varying analog voltage, which can be nice at times, but these ICs are fairly expensive from about two to four dollars each. Now, you might think, yes, temperature sensors make sense in this scenario because, hey, it's, it's all got all this green here, whereas this is all red. But if you think, think about for a minute, do we really need all of these advantages of the sensor ICs? Now, mind you, one thing I didn't mention here is the interfacing between the microcontroller and temperature sensor IC is usually a bit harder than a thermistor. Because now, in this case, you now have to use some sort of a serial bus to communicate with the tem temperature sensor ICs, whereas thermistor is just a single wire ADC that that can, that can connect to your ADC and we are done there. So, do we really need a sensor IC? Well, all we want to do is just measure some temperature and either we turn on the fans or we turn off the fans uh, and it doesn't matter if we are a degree or two off from the actual temperature and we definitely won't need that precision in our fan controller. Digital output, well, yeah, sure, I mean, we can use it, but it is much easier to interface a thermistor to a microcontroller than to interface a sensor IC. Since using a sensor IC in this scenario is going to be an overkill, we are probably going to go with thermistor for this design. So we'll use up to three thermistors in this design and we'll go ahead and look at what microcontrollers we'll be able to use for this. Now let's look at what are options we have for the microcontroller. So we basically need three inputs, two plus one outputs, especially two for the fans and one for the buzzer, if you want to include that. So we have three pins here, three pins here. Ideally, we want the inputs to have ADCs. And if the microcontroller has a PWM, it's well and good. So this adds up to six pins with ADC. And the first and the most cheapest choice that we have is we can use a uh, 80 tiny 85 for this project. Now mind you the 80 tiny 85 does not have a PWM but what we can do is we can simulate a software PWM on this 80 tiny. So let's go ahead and draw the schematic for this and let's see how we are going to design this. 